Welcome back to the podcast, everybody. I'm here with uh, a, a good colleague. Good, well, I, we're not good friends yet, but colleague, I suppose. Oh, acquaintance. Yeah. Good acquaintance. Bradley Hawkins. Hello. Say hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, he is a cellist, among other things, that we were just talking about how many different things he dabbles in, dabbles being the operative word. Uh, so go ahead, say hi, Bradley, and, and tell us what you do. Hello, uh, my name is Bradley Hawkins, and I serve uh, as a cellist, and I work as a composer and as an arranger uh, for all kinds of projects. I also teach at Seattle Pacific University, where I teach cello. I'm the cello professor there. And uh, I also te teach music technology, and uh, with specifically with computer music and uh, creating, composing music on a, on a computer. And you were one of the first people out there to just like jump right on the band. Well, you are the bandwagon everybody else is jumping on with the digital lessons. So tell us a little bit about how uh, that got started, what your thought process was maybe. Oh, okay. Well, um, I uh, spend a lot of time as a clinician and a lot of time as, uh, you know, like I'm the person like judging. I was, uh, I think tomorrow we were going to have state solo and ensemble and I was going to be out there. Yeah. For those of you who qualified, uh, I'm so sorry that I won't be able to hear you play uh, tomorrow. But um, but uh, you did a great job and <laughs> it'll be, um, uh, yeah, know, know that you qualified and you made it and you could have won. Um, mm -hmm. The uh, what I would say uh, about uh, that is that I spend a lot of time with like middle school orchestras and high school orchestras and and uh, working on like uh, how to make a sound and I love working with the students and especially working with students who um, whose families can't afford lessons you know like mm -hmm. I feel I view myself as a as a real um, uh, resource for uh, those kids um, because I grew up in a in a house that we couldn't always afford lessons. And uh, it was off and on uh, throughout my childhood. Yeah. Um, and I remember myself being put in that position of the, the teacher is coming for money, but you're just the kid. Mm -hmm. And what a, an awful feeling it is when you're put in that position of you respect your teacher and you're like, yeah, I mean, like, I wouldn't want to teach me. You deserve to get paid for this. <laughs> <laughs> but also, I'm not the one who writes the checks. I mean, that's just such an awful place for a student to be in and to have a resource like you that that's ready to step in is, is so needed and, sure. uh, and can save. I mean, it, it's a trauma and maybe the least severe of the word, uh, but that kind of experience that a kid can have where yeah. they're being expected to pay up for something that, that is really the adult's responsibility. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but, but also like, uh, you know, I mean, for, for many of you kids that are, in the pandemic right now, um, orchestra has kind of disappeared from your life. And maybe playing an instrument has sort of disappeared from your life because you're not really sure what to do. You yeah. can do a few things. You can play the music from orchestra, maybe. Um, and um, and uh, then, you know, if you brought it home in time. And there may, you may not have a lot of resources. And so uh, I started up this daily, daily cello hang, mm -hmm. uh, which happens at 9 a.m. every morning on zoom and uh, it's just kind of open to the world and i want every, everybody to sort of come and and uh, we do different kinds of things topics that we can do in a mm -hmm. large class in a video conference it's not necessarily you've heard the lag you all, all of you know how much time there is between one yeah you, you can't play at the same time then that's just a function that's just a function of how the computers work and and mm -hmm. and distance over time mm -hmm. um so, uh, but, uh, but there are things that we can do together, and that is to, uh, to uh, work on, like, technical skills, to work on making music that doesn't require notation. Uh, you know, like, mm. oftentimes, student cellists, student musicians, you violinists and whatever instrument, I actually was a horn player to start, I uh, played French horn for years, um, I, uh, you probably think of music as something that is adhered to. Like, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm going to get good enough so I can play this passage. But so much music is about just making a sound and reacting to that sound and then creating another sound that reacts to that sound and then finding a way to combine sounds together. Um, and then you suddenly become a composer. And, uh, but, uh, and, and you're closer to the music making. And that I think each of you uh, could make music on your own and not be try to not be self-conscious about 
um, about the kinds of sounds that you might make. Um, and, but, but instead, just sort of revel in the fact that you're making, like in this case, I'm, I'm rubbing some horse hair on a string, and it is making a bunch of wood vibrate. Mm -hmm. And uh, that in itself is a really cool thing. That's great. Well, since you've got the, the cello there and ready to go, if I'm a cello player, I'm sitting at home and I don't know what to do, but I do know that I should probably practice. And one thing that I want to improve is just getting a better sound out of my instrument, whatever note it is I'm playing. What are some things that we could do to get better tone? Ah, yes. So the best feeling on, uh, on an instrument is when you really feel the whole instrument vibrating and making a big sound. And you know, every once in a while, when you get that low tone where the entire, I'll play a little bit, where you feel the vibration in your chest and in your knees and even sometimes on the floor, mm -hmm. that uh, you're getting a big sound. It might even ring like uh, things in your house, you know? Uh, something that's on the mantle or something that's, you know, uh, over by the over by the sofa. And that is really fascinating that you are vibrating the air enough to sympathetically vibrate something back. I remember the so, first time that I, I noticed that particular phenomenon, I was trying out violins in high school at Ray's Violin Shop. Mm -hmm. And they've got, you know, the, the walls are covered in violins, violas and cellos. Yeah. And they've all probably been tuned at some point in the morning and you play a D major scale, and you're just a little high school kid playing a you know, unimpressive D major scale, and the whole room rings back at you. Yes, yeah, that's a really cool And thing. every now and again, if I'm really in tune and, and have really fantastic vibrato and do a, a good bow release, I can make that with just my instrument. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, that's really good. So one of the things that I, yeah, that's a, that's a, I, I, I really love that when I get it to ring and other strings ring. Yes. Um, one thing that I search for in, in getting that kind of sound is that I try and I'll start right here at the frog. Mm -hmm. and, and what I'll do is I'll sort of wiggle that string a little bit. And if I can wiggle this string without making a sound, oh, then yeah. I know that I've got it. I've gripped it, okay? That hair isn't, it isn't gonna let go until it makes a sound, okay? So once I, once I have that kind of sound on there, I have the entire instrument ready. And here's mm -hmm. that sound. And it can be played as well as an up bow. See if you can wiggle that string around. Oh yeah, the so up bow wiggle bow is really hard. Yeah, and you'll discover everything you need to know about where that first finger needs to be in order to press the, en the energy in. Essentially, you're making the bow kind of smile a little bit by, by yeah. pressing down into it. And if you can grab that, then you are learning something really important about how that friction works. And to go for a ka sound at the beginning, like that ka, mm -hmm. ka, ka sound is just the coolest kind of way to articulate a sound. Um, those of you who are brass players, you know that sound when you can, when you can just really like, ta, <laughs> you know, and make that sound. Woodwind players, the same kind of thing. It's just like, it, it just, it just bursts. And string players, we have a harder time because we have to think about like, oh, is the bow going to go this direction or this direction? Mm -hmm. And it's a little bit more separate. So spend the time just making this kind of like sound here. Well, and we're so uh, adverse to those scratchy sounds. Right. But the, the amount of that scratchiness that the audience actually hears is so little. Yeah. I mean, if you just uh, had a, f a went into a large room mm -hmm. and had a friend at like even 50 feet away record you making scratchy sounds, you, you'd be surprised how, how much just gets eaten up by the space between you. Yeah, yeah, that's true. I'd say about five feet, about a social, a social distance distance <laughs> is, uh, is about where nobody can hear your scratches. It's just well, and you've got to start with that, like you, you've demonstrated there with the really the full contact in the string where it's, it's not moving. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's, um, I don't know, just, uh, uh, yeah, see how big of a sound you can make such that your parents kind of don't want to hear it. Like, they're like, oh, <laughs> does it have to be that loud all the time? No, like, it, it does. You, you do get to make that kind of sound. And in my family, I've got two kids who also play musical instruments. So I've got a 12-year-old who plays um, uh, percussion and then a 10-year-old who plays uh, 
piano and some violin in uh, fifth grade orchestra. And, um, and uh, our rule is like, if you're making music, you get precedence over everything, you know? But um, figuring it, you know, like maybe you have to discuss with your parents that like, hey, this is, you know, like I'm gonna make some sound. And then you get to feel important. And then you get to be the star. And, and everyone else has to say like, oh yeah, I guess I'm gonna shut up. Oh, well, we don't need to have the TV set on. Like it's important, mm. it's important to like, if somebody's making music in any way that that, mm -hmm. if that could take precedence, if that could be the most important thing happening in the house, that might be. Yeah. My, my composition teacher in high school and college, Greg Utes often said, I don't even listen to classical music while I'm driving mm. because I want to give it my full attention. Right. Right. And chances are, if you're trying to give classical music your full attention while you're driving, you may end up in, in some terrible accident. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. That's true. Um, one thing uh, to, to sort of get into uh, m music making while you're in quarantine is kind of tricky. Like without having uh, without having like homework that or, or some kind of assignment that's due. Um, coming to the instrument, and deciding to pick up the instrument when you're not when you don't have to. Is, yeah. Uh, one of those tricky things and um, what I try to do is sort of make a game out of it like oh I need to learn that I need to learn that Dua Lipa song like how does that thing go uh, how do I how do I play some kind of you know like um, something you know whatever my favorite music is I want to figure out like what it is they're doing yeah that might get me involved and that audiation is something that I learned because I I did choir band and orchestra all kind of at at some point when i was little mm -hmm. and the audiation was such a bigger part of choir and then jazz but it's right. not something that we traditionally teach in in string orchestra classes right uh, so tell us about how how we can hear a song and then maybe be able to play it on our instrument because that's not something that we usually talk about uh sure. in the classical realm yeah sure so uh, I wonder if I can share audio in this. Yeah, uh, go right ahead. Original sound. Let's just check to see if um, let's just check to see if I've, I've got uh, um, something uh, that can be it can play. Hold on. Do, 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 do. Ah, here we go. All right. Oh, that's not the thing I need. Oh, okay. Music was off. It'll come back on. <clears throat> And so I'm, if I were to play something, I'll just play something random and we'll see if it'll, see if it'll do it. It won't, um, Apple Music uh, is my subscription and it does not like to have, uh, yes, there we go. Okay, great. All right, it, it uh, doesn't like to stream over, over the uh, internet. So that's, uh, and, and that's because uh, we don't wanna steal from good musicians who are making, uh, making stuff. So uh, I've got, um, uh, I'm going to push in just for fun, like uh, some electronica. Okay. And I'm just going to look for that. Okay. And I'm just going to play it. Um, and I'm going to search for it in my library. And ah, here we go. Here's something that might play. And let me just make sure that this thing will um, play uh, on your stereo or uh, on your end. So here is, now are you hearing st sound right now? You are, okay. All right, so uh, let me look, look for something. This is called, uh, let's see here, uh, cabe uh, oh yeah, here's that, Cabeza de Huevo. Okay, so this is kind of a reggaeton kind of sound and it's got a rap thing. And I might, I might really be into this kind of, you know, this, uh, this is something I've had in my, in my library for a while. I'm hearing kind of an A here. And you can make up things that go with it. And then once you find a note that is right, then you're like, oh, well, what are, they, what are the notes that might work with it? I, I have that anchor. And then maybe I might say like I'll I'll pause for a second. Dun da da dum da da dum da da dum You know That might even be da 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 
let's go back on the beginning of that song. And I just kind of spend some time like thinking about like, what is it that, what makes that music thing? And maybe I might need to sing it. Okay, now how do we make, how do we make that one work? I'm going to pause it. Yeah, and see, figure out maybe maybe it requires a pizzicato, you know, and then maybe I've got to sing it. And yeah. And and, and, and I, you know, like I'm gonna figure out exactly what this uh, what this song what this song is doing in here, you know. And then I might even try to figure out the rhythm of what's going on. Let's make sure that uh, my it says my home sharing is turned off. Let me just see if that. Uh, okay, there we go. Is this still playing? Yes. Okay, great. So, so this is what's called kind of a cumbia rhythm. I was gonna say it's kind of like and a calypso kind thump. of thing. Pump, 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 pump. Okay, and this can happen for any kind of music in my in our daily cello classes that I'm doing, and you're all welcome to attend, uh, especially you cellists. Um, uh, the uh, we uh, we try to figure out what's working on on whatever song. This last uh, couple of days, we've been working on an Irish song that has kind of a dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum ba dum kind of sound. This one particular dum ka dum ka dum ka dum And you'll find that the beats aren't happening exactly where you would think the rhythm would be. There's a certain th amount of feel, and you'll be able to catch that as a musician. You'll be able to hear like, ah, this is a dum ka da ka dum. And um, that to me is real music making and real music learning. And it might be your hook into saying, oh, great. I feel good about the cello. Now let's work on, now let's work on what my teacher told me to work on. You know, yeah. like, I've, I've now solved this problem and now I've got the instrument in my hands and now let's go play. Well, and uh, th this has sort of been a recurring topic throughout the, the podcast is at least to me as a, a public school teacher and a little bit as a private teacher, uh, what's most important isn't like what necessarily you're practicing, but that it happens as often as possible. Mm -hmm. All of my teachers said, you know, you only have to practice on the days that you eat. <laughs> Which hopefully is every day. <laughs> uh, so just finding a way to make the practice that day interesting enough and i think that's our own game as musician is how can i make it new or fun today mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and not every practice time is is fun yeah uh, but not and not every practice time is something where you quote unquote accomplish something you know there may be something where you just kind of play long tones and then you're just you don't think of it as learning but you're uh. right that the daily activity of it is great. Maybe you just want to go through all the old stuff that you know how to play. And, uh, and that is its own value. Right? Well, and it, and it may or may not be less productive, but it's still, you've, you still put the time in that day. Yeah. I, yeah. I like to say, uh, I, I forget who said it first, but you never, you know, leave a workout and say, gee, I wish I hadn't done that workout today. <laughs> but if you can get past the first five minutes of gosh, this sucks. I hate running then you can put, put in some time and get something done and you walk away just like, yeah, that kind of sucked a little bit or I'm sore, but you don't regret having done the work. <laughs> I, I, I like that idea. I like that idea. That's really fun. Uh, often I don't have anything really to show for my practice and that's a little tricky. Sometimes you feel like you're, you're kind of falling behind or, you know, like something that worked yesterday, you think, oh, I had it. Yeah. It's not there. And I'm not, I don't really have a good answer for that. Except yeah, the, uh, that is definitely something that I, I struggle with rheumatoid arthritis. And so some okay. days I feel like I practiced my full allotment of time that I put put aside for practicing. Mm -hmm. And when I come back the next day, it's like the muscle memory like didn't happen, sure. uh, which is really frustrating. And I know that that happens to everybody. That's not unique to my, you know, medical circumstance. Mm -hmm. um, but I... I know that the it's not just about getting better. It's also about forming good habits. Yeah. Because it, it, in music, what we're training uh, people to do, uh, because it's, it's not just for kids. If uh, there are adults watching this, maybe, who, are, who wish that they played the cello, um, it's never too late to start. Uh, right. But we, 
but what we teach isn't just music. It's also forming good habits. It's mm -hmm. like good musical hygiene is that putting time in when you, you've meant to, which for me is every day, but it doesn't matter so much for how long, as long yeah. as it's every day. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. I, I, re I really like that a lot. I really like that a lot. Um, so uh, when I started in music, I think uh -huh. it was like about seventh grade or so, I played some flute and I got pretty mm -hmm. good at that. And then I thought, oh, well, look, there's that tuba over there. I'm going to play mm -hmm. the, I'll, I'm going to try to play both of those. I was pretty obnoxious, I think, to my band director. <laughs> and, then my, and, my, and then my mother said, oh, you need, to, you need to play one instrument. So I thought, well, what's the uh -huh. midpoint between flute and tuba? Oh, uh, French horn. So I played French horn for years. And then I thought, well, oh, well, look at that bass guitar over there. I want to be a rock star. So I picked up a bass guitar. They had one in, in the corner at the band, in, the van, in the band room. And so uh, then I played both of those. And I played those through high school. And uh, then at some point in time, I had to pl choose one instrument. And the middle midpoint for me um, uh, was the uh, the midpoint for me was the uh, cello. And I thought, oh well, if I take the French horn and the bass together, then I've got this cello. And that's so this is what I became a um, uh, uh, studied in under, in college. Yeah. And um, and then but then I really liked performing. I, I excuse me. I really liked writing music and um, finding uh, and uh, writing music for people. I, uh, I was playing in rock bands in uh -huh. school and then I sang in musicals and I was singing in choir and there was just like lots of music making and I always wanted to make stuff up. And uh, so I studied a lot of like composition, like how do you make music that people will wanna play or what makes, what makes a piece good? And so um, I found myself uh, writing a lot of things First from for rock bands, then for jazz, uh, like jazz choir uh -huh. jazz bands, and then uh, I went and studied it in college as well uh, with that. And nowadays I write a lot of music for film, uh -huh. and for video games, and uh, a fair amount for stage as well. You know, you know, live people perform. Yeah. Now, how do the different compositional mediums differ between those different kinds of performances? Is it, is it all, I imagine it isn't all like Western notation. I bet some of this is probably in like a, a, a DAW or something like right. that, correct? Yeah, that's true. That's true. Here is, um, I might just, uh, I wonder if I can share, let me see if it'll, yeah, uh, go ahead. it'll uh, do this. It's a, I just updated my operating system and that was about the silliest thing I've done. Uh, so it's uh, I've just got to bring up, and I'm just going to share the screen just for a second. Go right ahead. Okie doke. And there's this. And this is going to restore some tracks, hopefully. We're looking now, we're focused on this little um, screen over here that's going to come up. Okay. We don't need that. All right. It's going to build, 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 build. Okay. Here we are. So um, this was sent to me by a composer. <clears throat> who uh, who uh, had uh, written out an entire piano concerto and um, and we have a whole bunch of different uh, performing uh, parts here and this is these are the uh, he wrote this in a program called Pro Tools uh -huh. and here are all of the tracks from top to bottom all the way through here as I scroll 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 through like this okay and what happened then is that he said, "Hey, can you write some? Can you play the cello parts? Because I want I want the parts to be live, okay? Oh, okay. And I want you to record into them. And this is kind of like creating a video for a class project. Yeah. So, um, there may be music. Let me go. Uh, let me go find the actual piece that he had uh, that he sent to me. And, and he sent me this as a PDF." And that PDF was, doo -doo -doo -doo. I think it's in, I think it's in my downloads. Donnelly for bass, previous 30 days. I'm gonna find this thing. Boom, introduction, all that we let in. I think it was, click. I should have prepared just a little bit better for this, but uh, we'll, we'll get it. Um, and this is in March. Records ready. Ah. We'll get it. Um, he sent me a part. Let me see if I can find exactly. Oh, let's go with uh, let's go with this. So mm -hmm. yeah, here's the cello part. Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna load this up, and 
here was this music, right? And so they sent me music. He sent the the composer sent me the, sent me this music over here, and he said, "Okay, can you play this in, and make it happen? You know, like uh, and and put the parts in." And so when yeah. I said, "Oh, sure," I put a few microphones up in my house, mm -hmm. uh, and and then I created a bunch of tracks, which were right down here. And let me just um, and then each one of these was like a take version. Okay. Okay. And so over here was the actual orchestra music that was playing. Mm -hmm. And then and then it was uh, rather hard to to uh, follow, so he sent me a click track and I'm going to bring this down in. And as you can see in here, I'm right now at me at measure 17 beat 3 and 244 hundredths and I'm going to go right back to the beginning. And then there is some music playing here in the piano part. And then there's a whole bunch of orchestra parts, which are created from his computer, which is up here. And all of this stuff ended up down here in these. And then he said, OK, so send me, create for me the music that's going to go right, um, with that. And I, this is the stuff that I actually played. OK, so then what happened was we uh, was uh, when you press record or when you press play, it'll play like this, okay? And it's kind of quiet and... And so there's the piano part that's playing along. And over here is where the cello parts were. And you'll have a situation like this where uh, I never actually met the composer, but he said, okay, well, I'm just gonna send this project over and then I want you to play this music with it and make it really good. And so I sent him basically all of my separate takes. Like this is one time playing, this is another time playing, here's another time playing, here's another time playing. This is all just one microphone. Then I came through here and I said, okay, well, here's the other cello part. And this is with this other microphone. And then we just keep going down through here um, with all these different parts. Okay. And uh, then there's a, there's a, there's a, oh, this is the original cello parts that came with. And I just sort of put them in the middle. And uh, then I sent him back. I saved everything. And then I sent it back to him uh, as sort of a finished product so that he could then, he wanted to do the editing and make that work. So that is the sort of performance. And as I press the, um, oops, press the uh, play button, uh, we have versions of that and it follows along, okay? So at some point in time after this, someone also then pr uh, played the violin parts in and they created a slightly larger project. And, um, and that's kind of how oftentimes these pieces go together, especially now in the pandemic. Yeah, and it's just, if you are somebody who's only ever seen Western notation, this is like, turns your brain into scrambled eggs. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, let me, uh, let me go click on one of these. Here's a, here is a, here is the actual, this is <laughs> yeah. what, this is, this is, these are the notes that we were going to play. Yep. <laughs> and then it got turned into notation eventually somewhere on mm. another PDF. And, yep. uh, and you can actually take those notes and move them around. Check this out. So now I'm just gonna make them a whole lot later, or I'm going to grab just one of the notes right over here, you know, and play it like that. And maybe that's frankly composing. Well, it, it in some ways, if you have the right perspective and you stand on your head and you hold your breath, it, it almost looks the same. <laughs> but entirely different. <laughs> yeah. Let me decipher this for you. This is sort of the piano keyboard. So you can see yeah. the, bla the black keys and the white keys. Over here, up here are the measures. And mm -hmm. I'm going to come in ever so uh, slightly tighter on this. And uh, I'm, I'm going to take this music back to where it was. And as you can see, these are both E's. So we're playing in octaves here mm -hmm. at the same, same point in time. And you'll notice that, let me see if, uh, oh yeah, this is where the things were originally, was uh, pretty close mm -hmm. to a beat. Let me see if that's totally true. Yes, that's a, 
that's where we were on that on that uh, moving the notes around and um, and so uh, for a sense of feel we have like beat measure 27 beat 3 measure 27 beat three and a half here's measure 27 beat four and then we have larger lines that tell us where the uh, downbeats are and where the music uh, begins and uh, if I wanted to mm -hmm. I could um, let's see here I'm, I'm gonna see if I can't just play in this bit and and play in something more right here so I'm going to press record okay I'm going to authorize this track make it active there we go and uh, I think uh, that uh, I'm going to play something in like like uh, this okay Okay, so oh, I'm over here, and I'm going to start right over here, and I'm going to press record. Oops, I need to record enable. Hold on a second. Do, 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 do. Here is that part. Okay, and now it's blinking over here, and I'm going to click on that, that little measure, and we're going to play something in. So I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to record here. That's giving me a count off. It'll just take a second. Okay. And as I play, ah, let me just uh, do a little a quick little setup. Uh, we want to make sure that options, window scrolling. Oh, we want page scrolling right here. Okay. And here's the, here's some music that I created right over here. And these are also long notes. If I play a long note, I'm going to turn off the count off. If I play a long note over on this, it will play super long over here. Let's see here. Do, 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 do. There we are. Okay. <clears throat> Here's the music that I did. Here is the recording. And I'm going to hold down a long note and it's th talking. And that is a long note that I might be playing on the cello as well. Okay, and that might become a, in this case, a whole note that ties over through the entire measure. Okay, and now if I say like, oh, I don't really want that to be an E, I'm just going to grab that mm -hmm. out and stick it over here and make it a B flat. Now, maybe this is a silly question or uh, a, maybe a, a question that doesn't have a good answer, but yes. why might a composer choose um, a, a DAW and its digital artist workspace over a uh, Western manuscript for something like a film score in particular. Oh, okay. Um, uh, in a in a in a workstation like this, you you can you can uh, work with video. You can actually take a video that someone has made and you can put it in there and install mm -hmm. it. And then you can say like, oh, that point where they jump out of the airplane, I want the music to start right there. And so you can actually say like, ah. I'm gonna, I'm you gonna can look at the sound better. waves and make it match up perfect with I'm the video. Start playing oh. right there, -ga 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 -dum, right? Or okay. the point where somebody just kind of says, "Oh no," and maybe we want some sad music at, at an exact point. And so that's why we might um, work with a computer. Also, uh, you can you can make something really inexpensively. You can play something and then show it exactly mm -hmm. what your ideas are. Uh, back in the old days, uh, you a composer would play something at the piano. Yeah. And say, okay, and it's going to be strings, and mm -hmm. and that was up to the director to say, yeah, okay, I guess I can see it as strings. But now you can actually play those strings and get it as close as you can, um, and make it convincing. And frankly, I would I would say that the computer is the main musical instrument of our time. Absolutely. Um, it is the it is the way that you hear music. It's the way that music is recorded. It's and it's the way that music is created for any number of uses, from video games to commercials to TV. It's all the music that you hear, and probably, um, yeah, I would say like fifty percent of the music that you hear is created on this piece of software. Well, and a lot of the times, especially for film, yeah, uh, when. I've been asked to to do more or less what what you've been asked to do on that project is, mm -hmm. hey, will you play the the cello parts here? Well, for me, the violin parts, um, they're usually written by people that don't have a lot of training in 
Western classical music mm -hmm. and write things that are really unidiomatic or like really difficult to play. Sure. That and so the, the, the benefit there writing from a computer is that the instruments can do anything. They can do any weird rhythm you want them to. <laughs> and it's, it's not difficult for the computer. Right. Uh, but I, any number of times where I was in a recording project, um, if for some reason the, the producer of whatever project it was didn't think that uh, the you know, strings or the winds or didn't like the percussion, they just used the, the digital sounds that were, the music was made with in the first place, which if you were the one that's being, you know, written out of the part, basically, you're like, well, there goes a week of my life I can't get back. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other ahead. hand, you could be, you know, you students could be that composer. You, you students could be that person who says, ah, I can create this music that's perfect. And I know exactly how it goes. And mm -hmm. there's no way, there's no way to notate in, in, Western classical music, a filter suite, which is that, you know, like yep. the dance music where it goes, boom, like a rise. There's, we could sort of draw a line over, over, uh, you know, a piece of staff paper. And, you know, you could get a musician to play it, but sometimes it just really needs to be done with a synthesizer on a computer and you can save it. Um, and I like to say that, like, Playing an instrument is like being an athlete because yeah. you have to do it each day. Uh, working on a computer and making music on a computer is much more like being a being a, a painter or an artist. Um, yeah, where you you can press you can you can save it and it'll be there the next day and you can build on it and and uh, and you can try alternate versions of things. You can say like, okay, hold on a second, we'll make an extra copy and I want to go in this direction. Well, and, and it requires uh, so much patience and focus. Right. But also, like, the, you've got to have the vision in your head. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that when you come back to make that little incremental progress, that you sort of know what you want it to look like, or if you've got it in your head, the direction right. that you're trying to go. Right. And when I showed you that piece of software with all the lines of music yeah. and everything like that, there are people who, who view that as music even more so, you know, like, that is their musical instrument, and that's where they feel most comfortable. And you may find... You know, you students may find that uh, that uh, that that is where you really have your greatest voice, and it's really it's it's amazing. I can't decide. There's part of me that just loves to play for people, and I can't give that up. Um, yeah. There's part of me that loves to teach um, the ideas of it, and I just can't give that up either. Um, and there's part of me that loves to sit and 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 uh, and really work out a problem and create you know like spend some time away from any kinds of distractions and really um create something that is new and solves a, a musical problem an analogy that that i feel is, is go, at least for for me for somebody who grew up in the 90s is yeah. video games all had this element of like unlocking stuff yeah you, you didn't necessarily use all of the stuff you unlock like you're playing something like mortal Kombat. there's no way you had the one player you like to use Mm -hmm. You wanted to unlock the full features because maybe there's this one thing you got to do where you need this one guy or you need this one tool. Mm -hmm. I see all of the different ways to make music, produce music, perform music are, are tools in the tool chest. Yep. And even if there's one that isn't your favorite, it uh, is still a benefit to you to at least understand what kind of applications benefit from that tool. Right, right. Um, and one thing about one thing about working in tech and music music and technology is that um, when we all got stuck in this pandemic at home, uh, I have all the tools I need to yeah. get stuff out and uh, and 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 solve problems for other people. I'm working with an ensemble right now to get their performance videos out, um, and we're creating some creating some videos and those kinds of videos that where you know you see individual people playing. That's actually quite an involved process that yeah, involves. Yeah, it's really hard. You know, like you have to make the whole performance in that digital audio workstation, and then you have to put the video on and edit the video in an actual editing program, and then you have to put those together and make sure that they link, you know, together, and so it sounds like we want it to sound, and so it looks like we want it to look, 
And there's a lot of work and there's a lot of skill in that. And I think that it's, it's, it's art. Yeah, well, and it's a marketable skill. When we, we think about careers in music, we think about either you're performing music, you're writing music, or you're like teaching music. And that's kind of like the three categories sure. that, that we visualize. But as you're kind of pointing out to us, there's a lot more going on. So just um, with this like digital interface and some of that editing, you've uncovered like four or five different full-time gigs that, sure. that exist out there, or you could piecemeal them and like I teach a little bit and then I do some editing on the side for this uh, film production company. Talk to us about how you could put several things together to make a career in music, but not really you know, bog yourself down just in, in one particular medium. Oh, okay. Well, um, you want to be good at, you want to be good so that people will, will mm. uh, hire you. But um, as I was talking to, uh, I was talking to a very famous um, video game composer just this week, um, you know, like he says, what we need is somebody who can play and they can do all the technical stuff so we can just say, hey, play this. And so they can send you projects just like that. And so, um, it's totally good to um, form a band with your friends. It's totally fantastic to try to make music in weird ways or, or um, yeah, it's, it's totally, you, you are not wasting your time by, um, you know, if you're in Apple the Universe uh, going to GarageBand or if you're in the Windows mm -hmm. Universe going to um, Cakewalk and grabbing that and just kind of like messing around with like stuff that may not sound right that's the beauty of music, by the way. You do it wrong once, it's wrong. You do it wrong twice, it's the new right. And yeah. you, you, might find, you might find that uh, you're creating something that nobody's ever heard before. Um, in, in the course of, a, say, a week, mm -hmm. um, I will uh, go to um, uh, networking events where I try and meet people. I might go to a rehearsal or two or five and where I would perform, you know, get ready for a concert that's on the weekend. Um, I might um, be uh, working with some client who needs music for, say, a wedding or a funeral or a corporate um, event. Uh, you might be, you might be playing on a stage with some, uh, you know, some Bill Gates or, uh, you know, uh, Schultz or somebody like that. I've done, done, yep. done that plenty. Um, and you might find yourself, uh, you know, with any particular week, you might find yourself also, you know, teaching, uh, you know, 15 or 20 students. You might also have somebody who says, oh, we need to fix this, um, this uh, notation. There's this orchestra piece. Can you make, can you make the parts uh, look really mm -hmm. good? Um, and so uh, I kind of like, I kind of like being able to uh, work in all of those things because uh, when one sort of drops off, the other one sort of feeds you and nourishes you. And um, um, when one gets really boring, uh, you have that other kind of work to do. And well, and the, there's so much burnout. I, I have found just trying to do the, like the classical orchestra performer mm -hmm. life. Of you, you've got to love practicing five hours a day. <laughs> and you've got to love pieces that you don't really like all that much. You, I mean, you, you, and you have to make yourself love them. And, <laughs> and that's all you do. Um, but I have found for myself by being a teacher and a performer and doing some arranging, not to the, the level of, um, you know, professionalism to which you have taken it. Uh, I, I find that in those moments, like you say, when one isn't, feeding me so much, I can go to another and still, you know, be fulfilled by music just in a different avenue. So when I, I need to, you know, focus my energies back in the practice room to learn something or prepare for a concert, uh, I don't find myself hating. Yeah. I, I'm sure you've gone through phases like this in, in your uh, experience that at some point the practice room becomes a bad place. <laughs> oh, yeah. Sadly, <laughs> sadly. And it just makes you feel worse. And if you don't have that outlet where you can continue to love music, uh, you're going to direct that negative energy at like, you know, all of music. And, and that's, that can't, that just is something we can't do. Yeah. Yeah. I do know a lot of musicians who have uh, completely different hobbies. 
Uh, for instance, uh, my non-music hobby is that I'm in this bicycle club and we like to go ride 100 miles in a day or 200 miles in a day and just go like, if you can imagine riding from Seattle to out around Mount Rainier and back, uh-huh. uh, it's about 250 miles. And if you start really early, you can do it all in a day. Um, some people, I know a, a fabulous bass player in the symphony and she does trapeze. Holy uh, cow. Yeah, you know, like it's, it's, it's a really cool way to sort of broaden your perspective on what the world is. Other people really enjoy uh, working on cars or, um, mm. or uh, you know, some people really like, uh, you know, real estate. They might uh, get into like flipping houses, you know, and maybe that be- for a while becomes your, your job. Um, and, uh, and then you come, you know, you, you still come back to music or you're still making music, you're still doing things. Um, well, it, it's interesting that what is similar between some of those, those different hobbies mm-hmm. is that they either maintain the, the physical aspect of making music Sure. and explore a different element or they explore like the minutiae, like being a mechanic is like, you've really got to get in there with, or if the, if it's broken, trying to figure out how to fix it and put it back together again. Uh, so the, a, a big conversation I have with my students all the time is what counts as practice. Oh, okay. And I think uh, that mechanic who's trying to figure out how to take something apart and put it back together is in their own way, practicing music. Because when you, uh, let's say you're trying to learn the prelude from the third Bach cello suite. If you play straight through it and there's bits of it that aren't working the same way that a car might, you know, just stall out in the middle of the freeway. Uh, you've got to have that mechanic mentality of which part do I take apart first to put it back together <laughs> most efficiently, especially if you're your own mechanic. Cause I mean, you've, uh, you, you can't just let the customer pay for it and wait. <laughs> You've got to do it yourself. Right, right. Um, yeah, so if something's not working in a piece, you have to figure out, like, why, what does the audience need to hear? Right? Mm-hmm. And when you're fixing a car, like, what was the decision that made into making this part, and why did it break, and how can I, how can I make it so that it won't break again? Or, you know, like, why is this thing not starting? Uh, why is this not why is this not communicating there may be a section where uh you know you're thinking about kind of, you're the one who brought up the uh suite the uh, prelude to the suite right so this is the third box suite right yep. so uh do we want it to like what's going to what's going to tell the audience what's going to what's going to make the audience hear like do i need to start big <laughs> Do I need to sort of sneak in a little bit? Right? Each one has its own little personality. They're all the same notation, and I didn't play any of them the same. Uh, Maybe the Boeing... I could just try this out. Right? With all slurs. Maybe it really... Well, and with Bach, he didn't leave a lot of instructions. No, which and then, which yeah. tells me not that we have to play it the way it was written, but that we are totally free to do with it as we, as we yeah. see fit as our own mechanic as what kind of car we're trying to build. Mm-hmm. And you know the 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 way in which we think a piece should be played is based upon what our teachers told us how it should be played, and what like, their teachers told them, like, and so on. YouTube yeah. performance, yeah. Time times change over what the expectation is and what how a piece should be played. Um, well, and, and that makes it new every time. How many cellists have played the third box suite? I mean, to, to hear it the same way that everybody, since Misha Maisky and, you know, the three generations back, that's, that's kind of uninteresting to me. To hear it a new way is exciting, I think. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. and then maybe, maybe you'll think like, I'm really inspired by that piece. I know how to play that piece. I'm going to write something else that maybe... Uh, maybe is a kind of a like an homage to it, like mm. um, like that's not the same, but it is. Sort it's got of, the flavor. Is yeah, and but I just created it, and you might find you know you students or somebody might just sort of say like ah that that is something, or maybe there's something about that C. So maybe I might say. Like I'm just inspired by that. 
inspired by that C that came from the middle of as this scale. Uh -huh. Right? Maybe there's something that. Like, there might be something that is just like, oh, I, you know, like that piece inspired me to write this other thing. Well, and uh, when I'm doing like music listening in class with my high school students, and every now and again I'll put on something 20th century that's, you know, really kind of out there. Mm -hmm. and, and maybe everybody hates it at <laughs> first. But when you understand, like, the, what was the artist trying to achieve and sure. what kind of really is the medium? Is yeah. this just an audio thing? Is this trying to make some kind of particular statement? Or like you said, was the inspiration that open sea? So like the, the, the crazy, cordy, chunky thing you did, we might not understand that at all until we've heard, well, I was playing box cello suite and I just really love that open C. Yeah. And now it all makes sense and we get it and it's not, you know, just noise anymore. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. It's uh, um, what we hear and what we take in, what we read on the news, what we, mm -hmm. what we imagine ourselves playing, uh, what we hear other people playing, that all feeds into our own... Um, ability to create art. So as we're, we're kind of coming to the end of our time here, and I've got two more questions. The first one we've kind of already talked about, um, but what is out there in the world of music that's getting you really excited right now? Oh, out there in the world of music that's really getting me really excited. Um, I like the fact that platform has changed. Uh, it used to be that you would have to like, uh, that there were only a few ways to get your music out. Yeah. And um, now, nowadays, like, uh, it, the way that, like, from, from TikTok to YouTube to different kinds of, different kinds of virtual performances, uh -huh. as well as, like, um, uh, as well as playing live, uh, there are just so many more options of, of how to get things out and how and how to sort of further the dialogue of music. I'm really fascinated too by how uh, different kinds of things that are considered noise uh -huh. uh, become musical ideas when they, you know, like when they are uh, put into a musical context uh, from sampling mm -hmm. uh, to uh, different kinds of uh, uh, synthesis uh, to s different kinds of uh, like audio manipulation. How do you, how do you make something, you know, uh, feel crunky or feel like it's being flushed down the toilet um, or, you know, <laughs> or turn backwards or, or um, uh, distorted in some way. And that that suddenly becomes a musical idea. And our, our ears are so much bigger now mm. um, with, uh, with the sounds all around us and the, the sounds coming out through media that like, it's just, it's, it's magic. Well, I, I remember that moment for myself when I was a kid and I got my first uh, MIDI keyboard. Mm -hmm. And it, you know, even just playing the same song with like the 125 MIDI sounds that were available to me sure. mm -hmm. it was a whole new world. It was, you know, I just turned the little clicker and now it's a different sound and, and find what that, you know, what that sample has to say. Sure. And in in my adulthood now, I can use a DAW and turn that the audio file literally backwards and make the sound happen in reverse. Yep. And the that 125 MIDI sounds that I started with as a kid is now practically exponential. Yeah, but also also people who didn't have a voice before now have voices. Yes, you know, because because of the technology. People who didn't have a musical education, people who didn't know how to n write down quarter notes and eighth notes, can now communicate musically, um, and uh, all kinds of all kinds of cultures uh, are now shared. Like we and we, you, you know, you may see some someone in traditional clothing, or maybe someone mm. who, um, uh, you know, like the, the entire hip hop genre could yeah. not have existed without music being recorded first and then understood later. And um, I just think that's magical. Well, I was just having a conversation uh, uh, two weeks ago with Anna Edwards about mm -hmm. why didn't we hear, you know, Fanny Mendelssohn's music while she was alive. And it was the, you know, the, the boys club gate of getting music performed is you had sure. to be part of this 
like in France, part of Les C, part of the six people that determined whether or not your music got played. Yeah. And now all, all you need to do is upload a TikTok and now everybody in the whole world can, you know, consume your art form, whatever right. that might be. Yeah. And in this, in this podcast, I was playing a, uh, a uh, Mexican, Mexican disco rock or a disco rap kind of uh, album that who knows, you know, like I never would have heard before. Uh -huh. um, and, uh, and I think it's amazing, you know, like, uh, you know, we never we never would think of rap being in Spanish, and it and, and some of you listeners are probably like, of course, these old guys that of course we listen to that all the time. But I mean, like, it's new for us, and it's new and exciting. I I'm just fascinated by it, like all the different voices that mm. that uh, that can be out there now on these platforms because of uh, computer music making. I I agree. Um, my last question I ask of all my guests is if you can think back to a time when you were just getting started in music or, or maybe in, in college getting, getting started as a professional, when you were really struggling or at a low point, if you could go back in time and tell yourself uh, something that would help you get through it or survive it better, what might that be? Uh, let's see here. Um, a low point where I just didn't feel like I could it could go on um huh i think that you know like someday you might find yourself doing exactly the things that you want to do and if you stay at something if if you stay at something long enough you will get to do the things that you that that thing that you want to do mm. um you may have to make sacrifices for it and it may be completely impossible it from your mind but people actually do the things that they want to do and that they act on doing and uh if you want if you can imagine yourself playing on a huge stage uh you know and you can make that happen uh, if you imagine yourself playing at a really high level if that's the kind of thing that you want to do if you stick with it enough you'll get there it may not be a specific place, you know, mm -hmm. it may not be a specific stage, but the act of actually doing the thing and continuing and persevering and surviving is its own reward. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and, and I, I like that you bring up the making, you might have to make some sacrifices along the way. And I, I think sometimes that's comp maybe compromise or concessions is that if let's say you're 16, uh, you're a junior in high school and you started cello three years ago and you want to be a professional cellist. So that's your goal. Be a professional cellist. That is absolutely possible. Yeah. Uh, but if, if you want to get more specific and say, I want to be exactly what Misha Maisky is, mm -hmm. that may or may not be within the realm of possibility. <laughs> uh, but, but that doesn't mean you can't pursue it. Right. It just means that maybe you'll end up, uh, you know, just, and not just, but maybe what your, your ultimate arrival point is now I'm a section player in the Adl Atlanta symphony. That's and that's no, crazy. that's no less impressive. Uh, from where you started, uh, and it and it's only a concession if you say, "Well, I'm not Misha Maisky." Oh, right, 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 right. Comparing yourself to others is is dangerous, you know, because you don't know you don't know what benefits they've had. Yeah, you don't know what they're going through or not going through, and mm -hmm. you may be in a situation where um, where uh, you don't have the resources to get yourself specifically somewhere um and uh but on the other hand like you know like somebody else can maybe even somebody in your orchestra that you're kind of jealous of um who seems to get all the breaks it's hard to say what they're going through and what kinds of things they what kinds of hardships they went through why is misha maisky not the most famous cellist in the world does he imagine himself like ah <laughs> 
I, you know, like if only I could be the most famous and instead, you know, instead of being like a pretty darn good cellist over the last 40 years, you know, like, yeah. he, you know, he's got lots of recordings. He's, he still performs. He still plays at a wonderfully high level. Um, and, uh, you know, he's still making a, making a living as a musician, you know, and, and making it happen each day. And he still has to get up and practice scales. Yeah. Well, and that's uh, that's not even talking about what his struggles might look like. Yeah, yeah. You know, is is he having the same existential crisis in his head of, well, geez, I wish I was this, you know, Rostropovich or somebody that was great while he was younger, you know? Yeah, uh, and, but it, I hope that I hope that he doesn't like view himself as a failure. And I yeah, hope that none of us do. You know, I hope that we don't we don't just say like, oh, if I can't do at this level, I I, I shouldn't even do it. The fact is that you will find your own route. Mm -hmm. And if you're doing the things that you want to do, and if, you're, and if you've got a goal in mind and you're working towards that goal, and if that, you'll, you'll, you'll attain it. I mean, you will, you will, you will yeah, do that. As thing. long as you're taking action on yeah, right. your goal. You've ha you have a goal and you're taking action. Sure. And, and, and I'll include, you know, taking a nap in taking action because sometimes we get burnt out and we need a little a little bit of self-care uh but if, as long as that's intentional and you've set the intention for yourself that i'm move i'm making progress i'm moving i'm going to take action today to meet my goal partially uh i, I think we both agree that y you'll get somewhere close to your goal whatever it is yeah yeah uh, well that pretty much wraps it up uh thank you so much for for ending on a almost zen note at the end there i, I really I, I jive with that totally and i i hope the students um see the benefit in it there that as much as you might be struggling to meet your own goals uh whoever your idols are are going through the the same kind of ex existential crisis you are and they're already at that goal yeah. yeah uh i've got a couple more questions off camera but thank you so much for coming on the podcast we really appreciate it you bet. And if you want to come in for the cello classes, you cellists who might be listening, it's every weekday at 9 a.m. on Zoom. And uh, yeah, I guess uh, I guess Nathan will give you the information on it. Yeah, we'll work together to get that link out. Okay, super. All right. All right.